Hi guys, my name is Jillian and welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you have been subscribed for a long time, you know that I have taken quite a long hiatus off of normal YouTube videos. This is not only because I've been super busy, um, getting married, moving, life in general, um, but also I have now started my PhD. So that is the reason I am sitting here with you today. <laughs> So if you follow me on other social media platforms, I still post on Instagram and on TikTok now and also on YouTube Shorts. So if you like to follow me and keep up with my life updates, um, I suggest that you follow me there. However, I decided to come back on the camera today to kind of just talk about life and what has been going on recently because I want to get back into YouTube. I love how I say that every single time, but this time I promise I really am trying to stick with it. I got married last year. I bought a house. Things got a little chaotic. But in addition to that, in addition to planning my wedding, I also applied to grad school again. So I have not come on here to talk about kind of my journey to the PhD because I was kind of anti-PhD for a long time. So I wanted to talk about it today and just kind of discuss my thought process and also the journey it took to get to my PhD um, in case anybody else is interested in applying or also if you're just interested to see if it's kind of a right fit for you. So I majored in chemistry in college with a biochemistry track, meaning that I focused on biochemistry, did all of the chem classes, and I also got a biology minor. I graduated with quite a bit of... I guess a chemistry experience and then I went into clinical trials and I was in a lab basically processing uh, human blood samples for phase one clinical trials. I actually really enjoyed that job. I made tons of friends that I still tons of friends. I love how I say that as if as like loads of people in the lab. No, I made friends with the people that were in the lab who I still talk with, still friends with. I loved the environment it just for me felt as if i was just kind of going through the motions at one point and i had this yearning for learning and doing more and i felt that i wasn't really growing in that job and so i chose to go the academic route so if you are new to kind of talking about stem careers you kind of always hear academia versus industry Okay, I need to take this hair tie off. It's really ruining the vibe here. If you've ever heard people talk about STEM careers, it's either academia or industry. And really, there are so many different routes you can take with your chemistry or biology or STEM major that it's really not that cut and dry. If you go out there and look for jobs, you'll start to see that. Um, so it's really confusing when you first look for jobs. I was confused. I didn't really know what I wanted to go into, how challenging it would be in each one, what the pay was like. So that's also why I wanna make videos for you guys and why I have made videos because it's very confusing in the beginning because you don't know what to expect when you go into a real job. So I switched basically from pharmaceutical kind of industry to academia and I was working as a lab tech in a actual research lab at the University of Maryland, Baltimore. So that I made a little bit more money and I got to see what it was like actually doing academic research versus what I was doing in my previous job as a clinical research project. And I was just a lab tech there and I was a lab tech. I literally never make, I never make YouTube videos. The one day I decide to do a YouTube video, the neighbor decides to saw things. I think he's finished. So I went to... A academic research lab which is very much a different experience than a pharmaceutical clinical research lab and I got to see um, what it's like to be a low man on the totem pole in a research lab and I have to say in the beginning it was a little overwhelming because I went from being in a school lab in undergrad to doing clinical research which was very simple lab skills but more learning on the GMP and clinical lab research experience and then I went to academic and it was a lot of lab a lot of expectations when it came to the research project and the responsibility that came along with that and in addition um, again being fully transparent it wasn't the best working environment 
And so in the beginning, I was really questioning my decision to go back into academia because my idea was that I wanted to get this job so that I can decide on whether I wanted to go to grad school. And I wanted to use this as my pathway because if you work in a academic research lab and then you apply after that to a grad school, program you are most likely gonna get in because you are showing that you can already handle being in that environment and learning those techniques and i knew that if i got this job i was almost guaranteed to be accepted somewhere for grad school and just to rewind a little bit i did apply my senior year to grad school and then COVID happened and to be honest, I didn't hear back from most of the schools and I'm not sure if some of that was COVID, but I also didn't get accepted and I only received a couple interviews and I ended up not going to grad school right after undergrad and I'm really glad now that I did not go the PhD route immediately after undergrad because I think that the experiences and things that I've learned in the industry and also in my lab tech position at university really helped me decide if I wanted to do the PhD and I think it'll help me push through the PhD and not second guess myself as much as I would have if I didn't try industry first and I eventually realized that the lab I was in was not the typical lab and I say that because a lot of people think that your one experience <laughs> defines how everything is in that institution so for example I think that I have a certain learning style and a certain working style that didn't really fit with the PI that I was working with and it was really hard at first to realize that that it was really because he has a certain working style and I had a certain working style and it wasn't working together but that working environment didn't necessarily define all labs in grad school and so I just want to emphasize that because I almost didn't try for my PhD because of this particular lab because I felt like they were all going to be like this and they were all going to burn me out because I felt especially burned out probably only after five months of being this lab and as many people say your PhD is a marathon, not a, not a race. <laughs> Did I mess that up? I don't know, but you get the idea. You don't want to burn out super quickly because you're in it for the long haul. So once I realized that this lab is not the typical lab and I just wasn't really as much a good fit and they weren't really a good fit for me I did try again for my PhD but I am super grateful for the experience I gained in that lab because it really showed me what I want to look for in a lab and especially in my thesis lab and also how to make sure my mindset is right going into my PhD because I don't want to have that toxic mentality of working so hard that I burn myself out too quickly, but I also want to make sure that I am in a lab that's very productive, doing good science, and doing something that feels fulfilling to my interests. So that basically leads me to where I am now. I got accepted last year. I went on some interviews and I did accept the university that I wanted to go to. And I started last August. So the first semester was just this really rigorous, what they call a core course. So it was Monday through Friday. We didn't work in the lab and we didn't work on our rotation labs, which if you don't know what a rotation lab is, a rotation lab is just kind of a trial run for a few labs that you're interested in for doing your thesis. So I did not begin those yet. We normally get three rotations and those are the labs that they either have your interest or you like the PI and you like their science and you can kind of stay in their lab for I think it's normally 8 to 12 weeks and then if you really like their lab you end up choosing them for your thesis lab. So if you guys don't already know I do have a podcast. I might have already mentioned that in the beginning of the video but on Bloom Theory Podcast I kind of talk about my PhD journey so go ahead and follow my podcast. It's available on Apple Podcasts and also Spotify if you want to hear more about kind of my thoughts and feelings going through the PhD and I'm also hoping to do more YouTube videos like this kind of just sitting down discussing talking it out so that brings me to current day I am starting my first rotation or I have started my first rotation and 
I am really liking it so far, but I hope to do more YouTube videos like this to just maybe do day in my life um, discussing what the PhD is like, what going through a PhD program is like, and if you guys have any ideas for YouTube videos that you want to hear from me, please comment them down below because I just want to help other people that are going through this same journey that I was going through where I was kind of torn between doing a PhD or staying in the industry or what, where my passion was. If you have any ideas on questions you want answered or videos, please comment them down below and I will try my best to answer them or put them in a video where I talk about whatever you asked about. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget, you can also see me on Instagram, TikTok, and listen to me on my podcast. So I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet.